Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl in Burnison, Massachusetts at Burnison Auto Wrecking. And you know, the Junkyard's kind of a museum in a lot of ways, and some things that we see here aren't cars, but they're just as interesting. This is what's called a cable excavator. You might also think of this as a steam shovel, but keep in mind, no steam happening here. This is actually a thing called the Shield Bantam. And Shield was a company that was located in Waverly, Iowa. And they basically competed with companies like Link Belt and Bucyrus Erie in the manufacture of bucket type scoopers and other pieces of construction equipment. But the thing about the Bantam, like its name, kind of small, this was a uh, 7 tenth scale uh, bucket loader type thing, or scooper, I should say. Uh, this was smaller than most and this allowed private contractors to enter the game and you got to wonder how many house foundations this thing dug and how many streets and how many sewer systems this thing contributed to the construction of kind of cool now this is called a cable excavator because of the cables that run the arm and the bucket now this was made in the days before the advent of hydraulics which is what we have now of course hydraulics require precision machining seals pumps, stuff that wasn't quite available in 1920s and 30s and early 40s when this thing was made. Let's continue our, uh, our look. Now this is kind of unusual. This one is mounted on an auto car truck and we saw that auto car C70 truck in a previous video. If not, check it out. Um, now most of these were mounted on a, uh, a bulldozer style caterpillar tread. Now that's good and bad. The good part of that is that it allowed uh, these things to go anywhere off-road, but getting it from job site to job site mandated a trailer because uh, you can't drive a bulldozer or a uh, excavator on the road with the with the links. So this would have been driven from site to site on the auto car host vehicle. So again, a small contractor probably had this thing. And here it is right here. Shield is the manufacturer, again in uh, Iowa. And here is the Bantam nameplate on the back. And again, a Bantam is like a small rooster, which speaks to the fact this is a smaller version of a excavator. Now, a lot of these had Chrysler industrial six-cylinder engines. This one's kind of weird. This one has an overhead valve, four-cylinder engine by Leroy. And here's the uh, tag for it. Leroy was an industrial engine manufacturer, sort of like Continental or Waukesha. And this thing would have run and does run a series of pulleys, which then, if you come around this side here, push and pull cables and arms and levers and clutches and sprags that cause the shovel and its arm to start moving. Now something kind of cool in here, here's the radiator to that sideways mounted Leroy four banger and that thing right there, that's a slot. That allows you to hand start the engine in the event the six volt battery fails. You could actually get in there and turn over like a Model T. A lot of strength to do that kind of a thing. Here's the uh, driver operator compartment. The seat's long gone, but you would have sat right here operating these levers that would then turn the cables, the pulleys, the sprags, the clutches that would then in their various uh, sequences cause the excavator's uh, bucket arm to move up, down, side to side, fore, aft, round and round. And uh, just an amazing piece of steel, cast iron, stamped steel, no aluminum here, no fiberglass here, no carbon fiber. This is heavy duty construction stuff. 